Hey there, it's Kevin Kennedy and welcome to this free mini course on Fusion 360. By the end of this class, you'll know how to 3D model a custom 3D printable nameplate. You'll learn how to use the box command, the text feature, a three-point arc, and how to use the sweep command. By the end of this class, you'll have built your very own nameplate and we'll export the Fusion 360 file as an STL file for 3D printing. Before we get started, I need to announce the six randomly selected winners from last week's giveaway. Congrats to the following winners. The grand prize goes to Andre C. The two second prizes go to Derek Spear and Mario Vada. And the three third prizes go to Justin Keating, Robert Bunny, and Rich Johnson. Thanks again to everyone who participated and provided their great feedback and ideas on how I can make more content to help everyone learn. To get started with this video, we'll first want to save our design file. I'll click the save icon in the upper left hand corner, and I'll name this file Kevin's Nameplate before clicking the blue save button. Fusion 360 offers several 3D features that help us quickly recreate basic 3D objects. You should first understand what workspace you're working in. Now the default is the design workspace, and this is where most work will be done. If you select the workspace dropdown, you'll see there are several other options. You'll want to be in the design workspace anytime you need to design three-dimensional objects. Also, take note of the tabs that are within the toolbar of the design workspace. For this class, we'll only be using the solid modeling tools, which are all grouped under the solid tab. If I select the create dropdown list, you'll notice we can create a box, cylinder, sphere, and a few other primitive shapes. Now the base of our nameplate is a simple rectangle or box, so we can use this box command to create it. After selecting the box command, we're prompted to select a plane or planar face. You'll start creating all new designs by selecting one of the origin planes, which are these orange planes that automatically appear. Now these planes correspond to the X, Y, and Z coordinates of the view cube. To start, I'll simply select the X, Y origin plane. Now I'm selecting this one to create the model as if it were sitting on a table. With the box command, we are first prompted to place the first corner of the box. I'll start the sketch by selecting the center origin point, and I'll drag out with my mouse. I'll then hit the tab key on my keyboard until the length input field is highlighted. For the length, I'll type out 200 millimeters. I'll hit the tab key once again to lock the length dimension in place and to switch to the width dimension. Notice the gold lock icon when dimensions are locked in place. This is to help ensure that you don't accidentally change the dimension values. Now you can still edit them at any time by hitting the tab key to return to that input. I'll type out 50 millimeters for the width value. After the width is defined, we'll need to click anywhere with our mouse to place the rectangle in the desired direction. Now you'll see that the box dialog appears after we place the two-dimensional rectangle. At this point, we can define the height in one of two ways. The first option is to drag the blue single directional arrow up or down until it reaches our desired height. The second way, which is more precise, would be to simply type out a dimension value in the box dialog. I want the base plate to be five millimeters thick, so I'll type out five millimeters for the height. Now this will create a nice solid 3D printable base, but feel free to alter the thickness to your desired value. To confirm the new 3D body, we'll need to click the OK button in the box dialog. Notice how we now have the box feature in the parametric timeline at the bottom. Now the timeline captures our design history so that we can go back and edit details if needed. Should you ever want to edit your box dimensions, you can double click on the box icon or right click and select edit feature. Just be sure to click the okay button to save any changes. Now that our base plate is complete, we can create custom text where you'll type out your name. 
To do so, we can use Fusion 360's native text feature. To access the text feature, we'll need to be in an active sketch environment, as it's one of the two-dimensional sketch tools. Now we're going to draw the text on the top surface of our base plate. So I'll select the top surface, and then I'll right-click. From the right-click menu, I'll select the Create Sketch option. Fusion 360 is then going to reorient this new sketch so we're looking directly at it. However, we may want to use the rotate arrows by the view cube to rotate the direction of the model so it's horizontal. To zoom in and out on the model, you can use your center mouse wheel. Now that we've created a new sketch, we're presented with all of the sketch tools in the toolbar. We were automatically placed in the Sketch tab, which only appears while you're working with sketches. However, not all of the sketch tools fit in the toolbar. Instead, we'll need to select the Create drop-down menu to see the full list. From here, we'll select the Text tool to activate it. We're then prompted to specify the text position. Now don't worry, we can always change the position after creating the text. For now, I'm simply going to click anywhere near the lower left-hand corner. After specifying the text anchor point, we're given the text dialog. It's here that you can type out your desired name or saying, or whatever you would like on your nameplate. I'm going to type out my name, Kevin Kennedy, in all caps. It's not required that you use all caps, but note that with some fonts, it will result in a better 3D print. You can also change the font or bold or italicize the text if you would like. Now I would recommend bolding the text for this nameplate, as this may also help it print better. After defining what your text looks like, we'll want to resize the text to fill the approximate width of our base plate. Now you can type out various numbers to try to see what works best. After a little bit of trial and error, I found that 22 millimeters works well for my text height. Then I'll simply click and drag the text anchor in the lower left to move the text until it's approximately centered on the base plate. Unfortunately, there's no native way to center align the text. For this beginner lesson, I suggest that you just eyeball it the best you can. Now I do have a write-up on some tricks to centerline text, which I'll link to on this tutorial's resource page at productdesignonline.com slash nameplate. That's productdesignonline.com slash n-a-m-e-p-l-a-t-e. -E. Finally, we'll need to click the OK button to confirm the text command, which creates two-dimensional sketch geometry on the top of our base. We're also done with this two-dimensional sketch, so we can select the green Finish Sketch button in the toolbar. This simply tells Fusion 360 we're done using our sketch tools, and it closes the sketch environment. To make the curve shape of the nameplate, we're going to utilize the Sweep command. Put simply, the Sweep command lets us take a two-dimensional shape and drag it along a path which results in a 3D shape. Therefore, the sweep command requires two things. First, it requires a closed profile shape or geometry that is connected all the way around. In our case, our 2D sketch geometry consisting of the text is going to be our profile. The second sweep requirement is a two-dimensional path for the profile to follow or sweep along, which is why the feature is called the sweep command. To create the sweep path, we can use any one of the sketch tools. For this project, we're going to use a three-point arc. To create the arc, we'll need to create a sketch perpendicular to our text. Now I'm going to use the view cube to look at the model from an angle. We can select the home icon next to the view cube to look at the model from the home perspective. I'll right-click on the left base of the base plate and I'll select Create Sketch. Once again, Fusion 360 will reorient the face and help us out, so we're looking directly at it. You'll want to use your center mouse wheel to zoom in so the model fills most of your screen, making it easier to work with. Because we're in an active sketch environment, we're once again given the Sketch tab in the toolbar. 
Now I don't see the arc feature in the toolbar, so I'll select the create dropdown list and I'll select the arc flyout folder. From here, I'll select the three point arc option. Once the three point arc is active, we'll need to define the first point. Now I'm going to click on the edge of the base plate where you'll see the square appears indicating that this will snap into the corner. For the second point of the arc, I'm simply going to click anywhere to the upper right. Then for the third point, I'll click somewhere in the middle where the arc results in a smooth curve. Remember, we can always readjust the shape of this arc later on if we're not happy with the outcome. For now, let's select the Finish Sketch button. Before we move on to create the sweep, please pause the video and take a moment to answer this question by commenting below, what's one thing in Fusion 360 that confuses you? Once again, I'll select the home icon to view the model from the home position. We're now ready to use the sweep command because we have the required profile shape and path. The sweep command can be found under the create dropdown list while in the solid modeling tab. You'll also find all of the commands via the shortcuts box, which is activated with the keyboard shortcut letter S as in Sierra. Simply type out the command name you're looking for and select it to activate it. Now you may have noticed that there were three sweep commands in the shortcuts box. For this class, you'll need to select the one with the blue icon, which means it's one of our solid modeling commands. The other colored sweep commands correspond to functions in other Fusion 360 environments. Once the sweep command is active, we'll need to first select our profile. In our case, we need to select a letter of the text, which will select all of them. You'll then see that we can switch to the path selector by selecting it in the dialog. For the path, I'll select the arc geometry. Lastly, we can define the sweep's appearance by defining how far along the sweep follows the path. It defaults to the entire length, which is why the distance is set to 1. Now we can change the distance value in the dialog, or we can drag the blue single direction arrow. I'm going to adjust the distance until about 0.7 so the text remains angled, and then I'll click OK. This is to ensure that our overhang can be 3D printed without using supports. The benefit of parametric modeling is that we can go back and update our features at any time. This allows us to continuously improve or alter our design details as requirements change. Let's say that we decide we want the curve of the arc to be different. To alter it, we simply need to double click on the second sketch in the timeline, which is the sketch that includes the arc. We can then edit the sketch geometry by clicking and dragging the arc points. I'm simply going to adjust the arc so it's a bit more curved. I'll then click the Finish Sketch button to take a look at the update. The swept text now has a larger curve applied to it. However, I want to ensure that it doesn't overhang too far. Remember that to get this to 3D print without supports, we need to make sure that our overhang isn't more than about 45 degrees. I can always double click on the sweep command to readjust the distance of the sweep. I'll change the sweep distance to 0.6 and I'll click the OK button. We may also want to move the text towards the top so the entire sweep is centered with the base plate. Double click on the first sketch in the timeline which contains the text. Then simply click and drag the text to move it toward the top of the base plate. Once you're happy with the new position, select Finish Sketch in the toolbar to take a look at the new results. To make this nameplate appear a little bit more polished, we could add some chamfers to the edges of the base plate. The chamfer command lets us add a bevel or flat surface to the edges. I'll activate the chamfer command from the Modify dropdown list. This list contains features that help you modify existing 3D bodies, whereas the Create dropdown contains features to create new types of 3D bodies. Once activated, we then need to select all four of the top edges of the base plate. Once all four edges are selected, you can type out a chamfer distance. 
I'll simply type out a few different numbers to see what looks good. Now I think somewhere between two and three millimeters works well. So to confirm the chamfer, I'll click OK in the dialog. Now that our 3D model is complete, we can export it as an STL file. Now there are two main ways to export for 3D printing. First, you can right click on the component in the browser and select Save as STL. Second, you can select the Tools tab, select the 3D print option in the toolbar, and then select your 3D model if it didn't auto select it. Within the Save as STL dialog, we can define the refinement type. This tells Fusion 360 how many triangle facets to use when creating the STL model. The higher the refinement, the greater the number of mesh triangles it will contain. For most models, the medium refinement option is sufficient. Lastly, you can export directly to a third party slicing software if you check Send to 3D Print Utility. However, it's important to note that Fusion 360 cannot open the other piece of software. You'll need to open the application before you click the OK button. Otherwise, you can uncheck that option and click OK to save the STL file directly to your computer's file folders. In summary, we looked at creating a basic shape with the box command, and we used the sweep command to turn our 2D text into a 3D body. The sweep command is a great tool to utilize anytime you want a 2D shape to follow a sketch geometry path. Last but not least, I want to give a quick shout out to those who supported my content over the last week. Special thanks to my new patrons, Dale F, J Homer 145, EJ Tech and DIY, Stephen A, and thanks to those who supported the channel via my Buy Me a Coffee page, Hans M, at Roby Shepherd, and Daniel K. If you've learned something in this free beginner mini course, then hit that like button and be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on future tutorials. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.